Um, are you familiar with Maslow's uh, pyramid as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so it's, I think I did a little bit of that in even in high school. Yeah. From economics course. Well, it's pretty. You know, it came out of that. He, Maslow, and Graves were actually um, working on the on this their their models at the same time, and they were in conversation with each other as well. The main difference was that. Maslow kind of made a closed pyramid at the top and Graves said, no, it's an open-ended system because these value systems solve a set of problems, but then create new problems, you know, which need to be solved. So it increases in complexity, but it never actually stops. There's no top of the pyramid. Okay. And at the end of his life, Maslow actually agreed with him and said, yeah, you're right. It's an open-ended system, not a closed system. So the, you know, the first level beige is simply survival, staying alive, right? That's uh, yeah. pretty basic. And after that, the, you know, basically once in your individual cocoon, as it were, you found out you can survive and you start to relax and, and open up and look around you a bit, it then becomes about safety. And that safety is found in belonging and connection uh, to others. So that's why it's, you know, really the community originally the tribal driven system. Um, where the, the primary drivers are still really precognitive. So it's still really at the emotional or the sensing level than the thinking level at those and there, so it's the impulse or the instinct to survive and then the deep emotional need to belong and feel safe. Basically, those are the first two, you know, beige and purple. And red, it's funny when I say red, my mind lamp, which is, uh, turns red here. Uh, <laughs> um, and... Uh, <laughs> um, Sorry, just one sec here. Um, and then in the in beige to um, red, uh, sorry, purple to red is the first time that the sense of separate self emerges, right? So it's the first time that we begin to see ourselves as an individual distinct from the rest of the world. And so that's when the, when the what in psychology, you know, they call the ego emerges for the first time. Um, and at that point where we realize there's us and the world, the rest of the world feels like a big threat. So that's why everyone, is, people would say it's like being in the jungle and what you're trying to do is survive and be the toughest and get to the top and be the boss and get respect from everybody around you because you suddenly realized actually that you're quite fragile as an individual, but you have realized that you're, that you're, that you're distinct from the world around you. Um, and so red has this very strong, creative, power um, to to assert itself and express itself uh, basically and um, what happens then is um, it, you know what the, the 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 spiral swings from warm colors to cool colors right swings across to the and the warm colors are really about the expression of the individual and the cool colors are about the individual connecting into a collective or a bigger whole you could think of it as a swing between the yin and the yang. The yang is the expression of the self and the yin is the connection into the collective. And so it always swings between these poles. And so having come from this strong red expressed self, um, it then the next stage is to look for more context and connection into a collective. And where at the red level, the individual is seen as the God, in the blue level, it, there's a search for meaning outside of the material reality, in a way. So, you know, in a, in a lot of um, gang gangs or um, uh, those kind of contexts, the individual really sees themselves as like top of the chain. But the switch back to, over to blue is, is you're realizing that that's actually an immensely stressful <laughs> experience to keep yourself at the top of the pile because you're having to protect your back and fight off all your competitors and everything the whole time. And so the swing to blue is to find your place in a bigger hierarchy where some other being or entity outside of yourself is at the top of that hierarchy. And that's where that, so that's the value system that all the world religions um, landed in when they emerged. And so in a, in a Christian tradition, it would be God, you know, is, is, is the big top of the pyramid up there. And then everybody else has their place in the hierarchy, as it were. So blue needs order, structure, um, uh, a sense of place, knowing that they'll get rewarded for what is good and punished for what is bad. So a sense of heaven and hell, as it were. 
Um, <clears throat> so, so blue is again, blue embeds itself in a collective context again, and almost uh, Claire Graves talked about the warm colors being express self and the cool colors being sacrifice self. So in a way you're giving up your ego or your individual self-expression to fit into a collective system, a collective hierarchy of rules and agreements. And that can be a, an organization, that can be a religion, that can be a, a countrywide, you know, uh, kind of government system, whatever, but it's that need for order, knowing what the rules are, knowing your place and, and just doing your thing and getting rewarded for it when you do it well. And then after that, there's a swing back to the express self side again, to the expression of the individual, where they find that that hierarchy becomes too uh, repressive and suffocating, and there's not enough space for the individual to express their own creativity and have their own ideas and initiative. So then it swings across to the orange system, um, where you've already got the rules of the game in place because blue has created those. So you now, but you now choose to go out and play the game yourself. Um, and rather than trusting, let's say, the priest to give you the answer in the hierarchy, you want to go out and work it out for yourself. So that's where the whole, um, in that express self system, you want to be the best yourself and you want to go out and do the best you can and you want to try to prove things for yourself. So that's where the whole scientific, rational mindset emerged within that orange uh, context uh, of, you know, being able to study the, the stars and look through a microscope and explore the earth and, and that kind of inquiry, inquisitiveness to know more and more and more and not just take it on faith uh, from somebody else. So that, that orange system is, the, I think they, they called it in the spiral dynamics, stride drive, striving to get to the top, as it were, striving to be the best. Um, but playing by the rules of the game. So accepting that there are rules of the game that keep the collective coherent. So it's like the, the you know, the, the rules of the government lays down, as it were, orange plays by those rules. And um, red doesn't. Red will get itself arrested, you know, because it, it doesn't really give a shit about the rules. It's like, I'm going to go out there and express myself and rebel against the system. And so parents struggle in that phase, in that red phase of development because they're trying to lay down the rules and the kids kind of bump up against it the whole time. So whereas orange plays by the rules of the civilization, basically, um, but it's still trying to do its best at the game. Uh, and then there's a, so that's very much the individual side again, and it swings back towards the collective side with green, where the individual in a way gets tired of always trying to be the best again and realizes that all of this material reward and wealth that it's created uh, or got for itself or this position that it's achieved for itself still doesn't make it make it make you happy and goes on a quest for happiness that's turned back into inside of itself so it looks for you know becomes more aware of its emotional well-being and um and becomes more sensitive to others' feelings. Orange doesn't really care about others' feelings as long as it can you know, do the best it can in that context. Green set becomes more sensitive to uh, the interior dynamics of other people and is looking for harmony. It's really looking for not a kind of rat race, is looking for quiet and peace and harmony and everybody agreeing and no argumentation, trying to include everybody in the um, in a decision-making process um, so that we're all happy uh, by the end of it and has an intrinsic motivation to be of service to other people and to the, and to the planet as well. So it comes with a, a more world-centric awareness, we would say. Those, so those are what Claire, Claire Graves called the first tier systems. Um, the thing about each of those first six systems is that they all believe that their perspective is the, is the true perspective and, and, and find it hard to accept any of the other value systems because they're so immersed in their own. Which, and that's the difference with when the yellow comes online. It's the first system that's able to take a distance from itself and its own value systems and be able to actually um, see that each of the value systems has their own worth and their own value and are all important in a developmental context, 
that everybody grows through these different value systems and you have to honor where people are in their value systems and meet them where they're at and create the life conditions for them to thrive creatively and constructively within their own value system. So that's what he called the big leap to second tier because it was the first system that was able to, to honor and respect all the other ones and not fight them all. For example, green has a big issue with blue because it hates hierarchy. Right? It has a big issue with uh, red because it doesn't like that, that individualistic uh, drive in it. It finds orange really uh, materialistic. So it ha it's still, green still has all sorts of judgments about the other value systems. And that's its contradiction. Even though it's trying to respect everybody, it's still kind of secretly judging everybody as well. Um, whereas yellow is, you know, takes a big step in its ability to take distance to its own perspective and therefore to other people's perspectives as well. And it sees everything and tries to connect it all up. So it takes like a helicopter view of things and realizes, wow, we have these big global challenges. We really need to connect up all the pieces to be able to solve these problems. Um, and goes on a kind of manic drive to, 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 to connect everything together and solve the problems basically. What, to, what happens then, and that's still, you know, it's, it's less, in, each time you go up, the individual collective differentiation becomes less polarized. So yellow is, is still individualistic in the sense that it's, it's still focused on individual freedom, as it were, and, and liberty and, and transformation. Although it's still trying to make a difference in the collective, because that's what green added. Um, and what happens, though, is, is that the complexity that yellow becomes aware of in the world becomes too much for the cognitive mind to process and deal with. It just, it just gets overwhelmed and realizes that there has to be a kind of simplicity the other side of that complexity. As it were. And that's what gives birth to turquoise, where it starts to underst well, understand, but really also to experience and feel um, the interconnectedness of everything that everything is ultimately a kind of uh, energy flows uh, moving around, information flows, energy flows, all of which is connected. And realizes also, uh, there's also a big dose of humility that comes in at Turquoise because it realizes that the complexity of reality is far too big for anybody to grasp and therefore for anybody to solve on their own. And that life has its own process of which we're a small part and so it, so turquoise, a big weight falls off yellow shoulders as it moves into turquoise and realizes, oh, look, life, you know, has a kind of unfolding of which I'm a part, but I can't engineer solutions. You know, I have to find <clears throat> how to work within the flow of things as they're going and has it develops a lot more trust for the nature of life uh, and the life process that's going on around it, as it were. So there we go. It's a quick trip up the spiral. <laughs> yes, I think what I took from it is, uh, is the spiral dynamic is a swing from warm, cool colors. So I'll always remember that. Thank you for that. Yeah, it makes it that I think that was what I, uh, I was needing to better understand uh, spiral dynamics. Swing, yeah, it, it's an important um, it's an important point because what it means is that red doesn't shift to blue, but red shifts to orange under influence of blue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So we always have warm and cool colors in us and blue doesn't change to orange. Blue changes to green under influence of orange. So you think of it, orange brings in the complexity of the, the, that yang side brings in the complexity that forces the yin side to move to its next level. That's where mm -hmm. it's a continual addition of complexity. That means that they, they, they kind of they play with each other in this polarity tension, as it were. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, sir. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for the questions, Zara. You're welcome. You mentioned um, that the swing is sort of from from the warm to cool is is lessening. Is that did I hear that? Like the the do you the see that? One of the questions I've been holding is does it eventually come into alignment? Is one of the questions I've been holding where. And, and I, I know it's complicated because you don't, you have a, another theory about the involution, <laughs> right? But from the spiral perspective, I wondered if it was, if that is a, like that, that must happen or if that's just happened so far. 
you know. I mean, you, you could say that when Turquoise comes online, that's the greatest level of integration, um, I guess, you know, so yeah, at that, at that level, it understands the individual, you know, yellow has given it the complexity for the individual to really crystallize itself in its own authenticity but then to see itself in a context uh, with a big dose of humility and a realization that we only understand 4% of the universe. So the other 96%, well, you know, we can't kind of control that. <laughs> so, uh, but we, but there are ways to expand your awareness as it were, and become more aware of what goes on in those domains, but there's just a huge amount that we can't predict or understand as well. So, it, so it, and, and I think it does, you could say it really does integrate it because it brings it back to the, you know, you being close to your essence, but also being connected to um, the bigger whole. That Jude Caravan would say that the general direction of, of evolution or evolution is increasing differentiation and increasing interconnectedness in parallel. So you can think that as the spiral un unfolds or that consciousness unfolds in us, we become clearer about who we are and what our unique contribution is and our un uniqueness as individuals at the same time we develop a, an, aw an, aw an awareness and an experience of interconnectedness <laughs>